Welcome! Today we're going to throw plates. And as you can probably see, it's finally summer in Denmark, so I took the liberty of uh, dressing a little bit lighter today. So I hope you will uh, follow me in this new venture on redesigning my plates. In my last plate video, I was testing three different kinds of clay and a number of different glazes. And they came out in like 25 different variations and I put it up in a questionnaire on Facebook, a couple of other places, and had people vote for the ones they liked the most. But of course, I also had my own opinion. The great thing is that it came out that what most people like is also what I like. And uh, one of the things is the, the clay, the black clay, everybody like that. And there's a couple of glazes like this one that, that also is very nice. But one thing that's difficult to see on pictures is I think it's still a little bit too small and a little bit too heavy. It is a stoneware plate, so it's okay, it's not super light, but I would like it to be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, <laughs> a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use the same amount of clay, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. As you remember, I had made this thick, and this is the width of the previous ones, it's 26 before I bent up the flange. Now I'm going to make it 29, but I'm going to use, at least I'm going to try and use the same amount of clay. So hopefully that's going to end out well. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. It doesn't feel too thin, so um, it's a good start. It's fine. So now I'm going to cut it to the new mark, so uh, 29 centimeter, and uh, see how that works. Yeah. 
So now I'm going to do something a bit different than what I did last time because I made it bigger. I'm also going to make the flange a little bit higher. Remember, I made this uh, small rib that just fits in under my um, splash pan. And uh, I want to make the, the flange a little bit higher than uh, the first ones. And um, also, I want to add a texture. So I'm going to add a texture on the flange. I never tried this, so um, may go totally wrong. I'm using this uh, this uh, roller from uh, MKM uh, Power Tools. They make, in my opinion, the best rollers. So uh, I'm gonna add that to the, to the flange part here. So far, it looks good. So now the challenge is going to be that I can't touch it on the inside because of course that's going to smudge up the, the structure. And um, I want to be careful not to, um, to put any water on it because that's going to smudge the, the texture as well. So I'm just going to see if I can somehow lift this. without distorting it. So far it looks okay. I think that actually looks really good. I'm happy. So um, I'm just gonna add my signature spiral. Um, And as usual, I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit so it doesn't become too um, too dramatic when um, when I glaze it. I think that looks pretty good.
found that it's important, two things are important here. Uh, one thing is to do it slowly. And then you are scraping off a little bit of clay when you do this. And don't do it all in, in, in one step. It's not very much, but if you don't if you don't take it out of the way, then it's gonna crumble up and then and distort the flames. And then also, I don't know if you can see it. I can't show it here. But I'm using this hand to uh, hold against the rib. Actually, quite a lot, because otherwise the rib wanna go like this. And of course, we don't want it to. And then when I get it in upright position, and I know it's a 45 degree angle, and now I just need to um, to clean um, clean the edge here, which is, as I said, a little more tricky with this because because I can't I can't touch the lower part of it, so I'm limited. <laughs> So I'm limited to uh, touching the, the back side here and um, of course the top. And um, what I also found from the other places, I need to pay a little more attention to this part because it, um, it looks best if it's a nice rounded top. Sort of like this. And just to be sure, I'm gonna check one last time with my rib that we have the right angle. And this looks perfect. And the last part is um, making my spiral, as I always do. and then just smooth it out a little bit. That's it. Now the plates have dried for almost 24 hours, maybe closer to 20. And it is warm now, it is summer, as I said. I dressed up a little bit more today, but it is warm. And so they do dry quickly, which is a quick reminder because I'm doing <laughs> almost everything the wrong way. I'm doing things differently than what most potters would tell you to do. So I don't cut off, I don't wire off the plates, and I don't cover them when I'm dry. So I leave them uncut and I dry them super fast. And still, out of the first 25 or so plates that I did, not one single one of them cracked, and not one single one of them warped. They all came out technically perfect. So maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe it's a combination of the clay and the room I'm drying in. I can't be sure, but it works for me. So in case you are thinking about doing plates, don't worry too much. Don't listen too much <laughs> to what your teachers and more experienced potters say. Just try it out. If it works for you, it's great. Not cutting them off. It is important that it sucks out some of the water from the plates and um, that I can take it off. So let's just see. Yeah, they're just getting off. Perfect. Now, if you look at this button, this is one of the main reasons I like not to cut them off. It's just super smooth and plain. So now I want to do some trimming and I really just need to trim the corner a little bit. And then I'll just um, I will, will, uh, burnish uh, the button with a shiny stone. I'll show you in a second. But this one definitely turned out great. As you may recall from my last plate video, I created this uh, special uh, bat with a circle of foam that fits the size, the inner size of my plate. Now, of course, these plates are a little bit bigger, but I think that will still work. Or maybe in the end, I will have to uh, make another one. See, already now you can see some advances because you can keep your fingers under it. That means you don't dump it on your bed and sometimes you crack the, the sides of it. And it's easy 
to move around. So now, of course, I need to do a little bit of centering. So, you could probably also do tap centering. That's just one of those kind of embarrassing things that I haven't learned yet. <laughs> it takes practice and uh, I haven't invested that time in yet. I think I should. I'm going to do very little trimming on these plates. I'm just going to round off the corner and then I will burnish uh, the whole plate. I'm also going to go down the side a little bit because sometimes when you use this, um, my rip tool, um, um, can leave a little bit of crumbles and I want to make sure that there's none of that. Now the plates are done. They've been bisque fired and I glazed them. And I hate to brag, but I am so happy. <laughs> I finally got to the plate that I want, at least the dinner plate size. Evaluating a functionware or kitchenware like this, there are really two sides of it. One is the visual part of it, because I want it to be beautiful. You know, otherwise I could just buy some cheap shit in Ikea. But I want this to stand out and be beautiful. So from an aesthetic point of view, that's one thing. And of course, that's very subjective. But there's also a functional part of it, which is a tricky part <laughs> with, with functional wear and kitchen wear and dinner plates like this. But they came out technically perfect in my mind. First of all, they stack really well. This is 11 plates. And it only takes up, what is it, like 15 centimeter. So they take up very little space in my um, cabinets. That's one thing. The other thing is that they um, fit very well into my dishwasher. That was another problem I had with big plates because of a big, big flange. They become so big that they don't fit my, kit, uh, my um, dishwasher. These ones do. And the most tricky part is probably to glaze it in a way that they don't leave cutlery marks. And this is tricky because you probably had some kitchenware like cups or plates, something. And then when you use uh, uh, cutlery, metal cutlery, they over time leave marks and it kind of just makes them look a bit dirty. It doesn't look so good. But what is it <laughs> that makes a glaze uh, responsive to, to, um, to cutlery? It's a little bit tricky. It's basically a question of the glaze being too hard. <laughs> Not that a glaze can get too hard, but for a plate or cup, it can. Um, sometimes it's because there's a lot of circle packs in it. Uh, it can be other materials that makes it hard. But the good thing is, with these plates, I now use them a few times. Also, these glazes I, I used in the first batch of my plates, and, um, and I use them every day for like a couple of months, and there's no marks. Also, I wash them in the washing machine for, I don't know, 20, 30 times, and they come out perfect. So that was all the technical part of it, and I really love how that came out. Now to the more aesthetic part of it. I mean, look at this. I just love this plate. The flange came out perfect, uh, so strong, and the the swirly, and, and I mean, it comes out really strong with this glaze. This is a, a sort of a yellow glaze, but on the dark uh, black uh, clay, it comes out more like a, a orange ochre type of uh, glaze. And this is the other one that I tested and that everybody seemed to like. Um, 
a green one. This is the one that was supposed to be gray. <laughs> Remember, I added a um, little bit of black stain and very, very little bit of cobalt. But I forgot that there's a lot of titanium in the rutile and titanium and cobalt creates green. I didn't know that, now I know. So it was a mistake, but I love it. <laughs> it's just a beautiful place. So I'm gonna continue at least with these two colors on my plate. Then I tried to make the gray one. <laughs> uh, I made it uh, with a, a black stain uh, that um, was originally used by another potter to create this gray. Um, and I mean, it's still beautiful, but it's not, I mean, it's difficult to see on video. It's not completely gray. It's got a little bit of a yellow, greenish tint to it. Um, so I'm probably not gonna continue with this because it's too close to uh, this one. But it's definitely beautiful. I used it also on a, on a couple of uh, these cups and I used it on a, a pitcher. And uh, I think it comes out, it, it looks like some old stoneware. Um, and, and so the glaze is definitely good. I'm definitely going to keep it. I just don't think this is going to be the third color I'm going to use for my plates. Anyway, that was a whole lot of talking. <laughs> I'm just so excited for my plates. Uh, I have the rest of the yellow or orange plates in the kiln right now. Uh, so I have 10 of one and 11 of the other. And uh, I'm going to a market uh, next week. Um, a very famous market here in Denmark. I'm going to see how um, the audience responds to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and my journey with my plates. It's not done yet because now this is the dinner plate. Uh, I also want to do the same design but on a lunch plate. And I want to try and see how I can make a deep uh, plate um, for like pasta and stuff like that. So that's a whole new design. Uh, Before I have like my range of three plates, I think is useful. That's at least what I use in my household. Anyway, I hope you like this video and uh, I have another video that is coming up probably today as well with uh, the tools that I use for making my plates because I actually updated my tools and made it a little more efficient than what you saw in this video. So there's a few more things to it now. It actually makes it faster and more precise and well, just a blast to make it. So um, please subscribe if you like it, uh, write a comment, share whatever you like and um, I will have a new video coming up next Sunday usually at 5 uh, p.m. Central European time so um, I just hope to see you there and uh, enjoy the summer <laughs>